All right, we're here at the Sigma booth at WPPI. We're going to talk about one of the unsung heroes of the Sigma accessory line, the USB dock. And we'll cover what it is, what you can do with it, and how it can help you with your image making. So we'll start with the basics. What is the USB dock? The USB dock is an accessory that allows you to connect your Sigma Global Vision lenses to your computer, allowing you to do firmware updates, to customize the autofocus performance with your camera body, and to customize certain functions of the lens depending on which lens we're looking at. The software that drives this is called Sigma Optimization Pro. And this is a free application available on our site, sigmaphoto.com, under service and support. With Optimization Pro, you have the full global vision family is going to be compatible. All of the contemporary art and sports series lenses are fully compatible with this. Uh, Sigma was the first to bring this level of customization and control to the end user. And we continue to be the front runner in terms of the breadth of equipment that's available and the depth of adjustments and customizations that you can do. So for most people, the biggest thing that this gives you is the ability to update firmware of your lenses easily at home without having to send your equipment away to a repair center. This allows you to keep your lenses in step with the changes that the camera manufacturers are making without having to send your equipment away. So let's take a look at how that looks in Optimization Pro. So the first step is connecting your lens via the USB dock and opening Optimization Pro. Once you've done that, it'll load up the lens mount, the serial number, and the current firmware version. And then it will also automatically check to see if there's a newer version of firmware available. If a newer version is found, you'll be prompted here to update your lens. At this point, you can either initiate it by hitting yes, decline it by hitting later, or you can check detailed information to see what exactly that firmware version has changed. If we click on that, it'll load up all of the firmware versions available for that lens and detail what's happened for each firmware version update. Once we're ready to perform the update, we'll jump back into Optimization Pro, and we'll hit the Yes button. Optimization Pro will then caution you to make sure that you don't disconnect the lens during this process. It's important to remember that we're essentially rewriting the operating system of the lens at this point. And if we were to interrupt it during this process, the lens may not be able to communicate with your camera. So we'll go ahead and click Yes. Sigma Optimization Pro will then download the firmware version and load it directly to the lens for you. So it's super simple. This takes usually about a minute, minute and a half, depending on the firmware version and your internet connection. Once it's been completed, Optimization Pro will tell you that you can now disconnect the lens, and you can jump back to the landing page. So it's super straightforward, super easy. You don't have to manually manage files like you would with uh, updating the firmware of a camera. At this point, you can safely disconnect the lens, or we can jump into the customization menu. So let's take a look at what we can do in there. In the customization menu, you're going to have four options, depending on what lens is connected. You'll have focus settings. That's going to be available for every global vision lens, any lens in the contemporary art or sports series. Not all of these options are going to be available for every lens. And if it's not compatible with the connected lens, it'll be grayed out and it won't be selectable. But this first setting, focus setting, is going to be available for every lens. So let's start with that one there. If we hit that button, you'll find this is where we can make focus adjustments for the DSLR bodied lenses. With the fixed focal length lenses, we'll have four different focus settings or positions that we can adjust for. And this is the ideal place to correct for back or front focusing issues. If you make those adjustments in camera, you typically only get one adjustment, which will affect the entire range of the lens. And as the optics inside the lens shift to achieve focus and or to change focal length with a zoom lens, your focus can shift too. So having the ability to make discrete adjustments at different distances allows us more control. So let's take a look at an example with the 35 art. Let's say in this image I was trying to focus on the green box in the center. In this case, the yellow box behind it is actually a little bit sharper, indicating we might have some back focusing issues here. Now, if I were to make this adjustment in camera, if the lens is fine at far distances, but it's back focusing at near distances, if I make an adjustment for where it's off at the near distances, it's also going to affect those far distances. So it's essentially shifting the problem rather than fixing it. If we hop into Optimization Pro, this is where it becomes really helpful to be able to tailor those adjustments to different distances. So in that example, if I need to bring focus forward on the near distances, I'll enter a negative adjustment for those two ranges. And then once your lens has been calibrated to your camera body, focus should fall exactly where you intend it to. We can see here, now the box in the center where I wanted it to be sharpest is sharpest. Now in addition to those four different distances, with zoom lenses, you can also make adjustments at four different focal lengths for a total of 16 potential <laughs> adjustments here. The best way to do this is going to be to set a focus calibration target in the distance that you're trying to calibrate for. Take your shot, and then take that card, view it in your computer, not on the camera screen, 
at 100% and see, is it sharpest in the center here where I told it to be focused? Or is it slightly sharper behind or in front? If you find that it's sharper behind or in front of that target, that's where we need to go into Optimization Pro and make those adjustments. And if that doesn't sound like something you want to spend time doing, don't worry. Sigma will take care of that for you during the four-year warranty. Now, to do that, we need to have both the camera and the lens. So you can send those to our attention here. This is available on our site at sigmaphoto.com. Also in this menu, if you buy a second-hand lens or you're using someone else's lens that's been adjusted to someone else's camera body, you can quickly and easily reset it back to default with one button here. And that'll zero those changes out. Now, the next setting in here, the full-time manual focus setting, this allows us to manually override focus at any point, even when the camera is in autofocus mode. So we can either turn it off or on here as we want to. We can also adjust the sensitivity, uh, which is going to either delay or initiate full-time manual focus. So a lower number is going to be a more sensitive setting, meaning it'll take less adjustment of the focus ring to initiate manual focus. A higher number is going to be a lower sensitivity setting, which means you'll have to turn the focus ring further before the camera reverts to manual focus. Now, the next setting I don't actually have a screenshot of because it's only compatible with the brand new 70 to 200, which I don't have a sample of yet. But the autofocus button setting will allow us to program the buttons on the new 70 to 200 to either initiate as an autofocus on button or an autofocus lock button for Nikon bodies. On the Canon bodies, you can actually program it in the camera menu. And you have, I think, like six or seven different options there. And then our last setting here, customization mode settings. This is going to correspond to our telephoto lenses that have the custom switch on the barrel. At this point, that would be the uh, Contemporary 100 to 400, the new 70 to 200 sports, both the Contemporary and Sport 150 to 600s, the 60 to 600 sports, and the 500 F4 sport. When we hit customization mode settings, we'll see C1 and C2, which correlate to those buttons or those positions on the lens here. So for either one of these, we can program autofocus speed, we can program focus limiter settings, and we can program optical stabilization settings. So let's take a look at what exactly we can change for those. We'll start with autofocus speed. We can either prioritize autofocus for speed, which is going to give us faster tracking. We can have it smooth out for more gradual transitions from point to point, or we can leave it as standard default. So fast autofocus priority is going to be helpful when you're tracking quickly moving subjects uh, with an uninterrupted view. So if you have something between you and your subject, that can actually make the lens lose focus more quickly. It's going to be more likely to jump focus. Smooth autofocus priority would be helpful in those situations when you're shooting through objects that might confuse the lens and the camera. This will actually slow down the transition from point to point, and it'll be less likely to jump focus. By default, it's a, com or a, a compromise between the two, standard autofocus. And when the custom switch is set to off, it'll go back to the standard position. All right, our next option is the focus limiter setting. And when we click on that, we'll see the entire range that the lens is capable of focusing through. And we'll have a slider on either end that we can move to customize what range the lens is going to focus through. So if we're working in a controlled environment where we know the relative distance between ourselves and our subject, we can speed up autofocus by limiting what range the lens is going to move through. But it's important to remember, if this is initiated on the lens, the lens will not be able to focus outside of that. So it's <laughs> it could be easy to get yourself in trouble there. But let's say in this instance, the camera identified the chain link fence as the subject rather than the athlete behind it. Because Mark shoots these events frequently, he knows the relative distance between himself and this first base. So he was able to program that before the game. And switching it into that focus limit, he's able to push the lens to focus past the fence and focus on the athlete instead. And our last option here, optical stabilization settings. Just like the autofocus setting, we've got three options here. We have dynamic view mode, standard setting, and moderate view mode. In dynamic view mode, this is going to give us the highest degree of compensation. So the optics in the lens are going to shift more to compensate for camera motion. This is probably going to give you more visible shift in the viewfinder as those optics are moving. In moderate view mode, it's going to stabilize sooner, so there's less movement in the viewfinder, but it's not going to be able to compensate for as much motion as it's locked down earlier. And again, by default, it's going to be a compromise between the two, standard. And when the custom switches in the off position, it'll again go back to standard. So the nice thing about having the ability to program any combination of those settings on the C1 and C2 switches is you can quickly and easily jump between customized settings and standard settings in the field without having to reconnect your lens to your computer. And that wraps up our visual walkthrough of the USB dock. Sounds like we must have covered it all.